The patient checkout screen is another way for the front office to post co-pays and or check out a patient. Up on the toolbar, click on the patient checkout button. Over to the left hand side will be a list of all the patients that we can post payments for and to the right, posting the payment. The only time you'll ever see a patient listed in this section is if first the patient's been scheduled on the appointment scheduler, secondly after they've been scheduled the doctor or somebody has already posted the charges for the patient, and third the patient hasn't already been checked out yet. For example we've got Mark Andrew here so charges have been posted for him and also he's been scheduled on the appointment scheduler but hasn't been checked out yet. Let's go ahead and take a look at the appointment scheduler. He was scheduled for Dr. Jones on October 27th, so I can scroll up, and there he is. Now he has been checked out. If he had, he'd have a little pound sign that showed he's been checked out, but he has had charges posted for him. For example, if I left click on him and go down to select patient, it'll pull him up at the top and then I can click on edit. I want to show you that charges have been posted for that date of service. And I can go to his history tab, and then for Mark Andrew, you can see for the date of service, October 27th, charges have been posted for $65 and $45. So from here, we have two options with Mark. First, we can select him and check him out, which is the same as going to the appointment scheduler here and left-clicking on his name and also checking him out. Or we can select his name and then type in a copay amount and then split it to the correct charges down below and post it, in which case it'll also post the payment and check them out. For example, let's say he makes a payment of $10. Up at the top, it'll always be the payment source from the patient. The payment code will always be PP or, when you click on the ellipsis button, a payment by the patient. Of course, then there's the payment amount. And then what method, check, visa, cash, check number, Oldest to newest, what that means is it takes the total amount up here and applies it to the oldest charge first. Of course, we have two charges, so what we could do is we could say we want to apply it manually, and once we select manual, you notice that the total amount remaining is $10 of $10, and what we're going to do is we're going to say $5 goes to this charge, and then you can see I have $5 left, and the other 5 will go to this charge. The boxes to the right of them, you can click on the ellipsis button and select a reason code, for example, this is a copay, double click on it, and then click OK, and it changes the color of the box. When you hover over it, it tells you it's a copay. These reason codes will also print on the patient's statement. In fact, if you want more information to print on the patient's statement, the next one they get, you can come up here and type in a note, whatever you'd like, and check the box to include it on the statement, or you can use Advanced MD Defaults, Payment Notes, or under the Master Files menu, down to Payment Notes. So what you create here and you see here, if you go back to patient checkout, you click the ellipsis button, you'll see here. And you can double click and it fills it in for you. Finally, when you're ready, just simply click on the post button and it will post the, the payments of $5 for each charge. You can also check the receipt box and it will print a receipt for the patient as well. Now before we actually post the payment for the patient and check them out, you'll see below we got two additional buttons, post and recall and recall. The only time you'll see these buttons is if the doctor, when he's posting charges for the patient over here, in this case Mark, if he also posts a recall appointment in addition to the charges that he's posting. So let's go ahead and post the payment here. Removes Mark from the to-do list. Go ahead and close out. We left the scheduler open, so we'll refresh it. Scroll back up, and you'll see that Mark Andrew is now checked out, and also he has payments posted to him, and we can find that out. We still have his name up here, and we can click Edit, and it'll pull him up in the Patient Demographics. We can go right to the History tab, click on our plus signs to expand it, and there's our payment for $5 each tied to each charge. Now let's see what happens when a doctor posts the charges along with the recall visit when we're using the patient checkout. Go ahead and close out of the appointment scheduler and go right to his online charge slip. You can see the doctor has one patient here to post a charge for today who's been scheduled at 7.45 a.m., Sandy Ann. He'll go ahead and check the boxes for his charges up at the top and then down at the bottom his diagnosis codes. And let's see he wants to see Sandy for a follow-up appointment type in about three days. He saves it, adds it as a line item here for recall, then all he has to do is click process. And when he clicks process, it'll post the charges up at the top and also add a recall that the doctor wants to see the patient on October 30th in three days. So let's click the process button removes her from the to-do list. We can close out now, and then we can go to the patient checkout button. Now again, remember the only time you'll see anybody here is if first they've been scheduled, and second, the charges have already been posted, like for Sandy Ann. 
Go ahead and click and now you can see the other two buttons are highlighted because the doctor scheduled a recall for the next appointment type of follow-up. If you need more information on what recalls are, recommend you look at the recall training video. So for Ann Sandy, we can check her out. No payments are posted. She'll be removed. We can go ahead and post payments here, but you'll notice that each of them is an insurance balance. We haven't billed the insurance yet, and there's no copay due, so we're not going to post any payments. So that leaves us with two options, either checking her out or checking her out and scheduling a recall. When I click on the recall button or I post a payment click on the recall, in this case it would post the payment and then in either one of these that has the recall, it'll automatically pull up the appointment scheduler for when the recalls due October 30th. We can schedule Sandy Ann for October 30th to be seen by the doctor as a follow-up appointment type. I'll go ahead and click recall. Automatically she will be removed from the patient checkout screen pulls up her name in the appointment scheduler to October 30th and then I can go ahead and schedule make an appointment for the follow-up recall.